Hi everyone, it's uh, Scott here again. Uh, so we're talking about the uh, 20th anniversary of the Agile Manifesto, the Agile can community. And uh, I'm here today with uh, a lot of my friends uh, who are also, um, and some new, some some a little bit that we know for longer. And uh, one of the things we've been doing as a, as a kind of broader community of about 100 people is thinking about and um, helping me with my idea. And I think, I think that's amazing. So I had an idea about a month ago and uh, yeah, the amount of people that have came to help me with the idea is amazing. Um, in fact, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm overwhelmed. Um, overwhelmed emotionally, overwhelmed uh, also in the amount of interaction. Uh, so, so one of the things I want to do today is just uh, is, is talk about my vision. And I've never really explained the vision properly uh, or, or why we've got the vision there. And I, I hear my daughter shouting in the background. So that's, uh, that's one for the video. Um, so a couple of things came together to make me think about uh, about this event, and it had been brewing really for for at least a year in me, um, possibly longer. Um, one of the key things that you know I'd been um, been involved in is as I went through Agile, and that we, we had quite a lot of dispute in Scotland. Um, I kind of I kind of really regret it now, um, but you know the community was really split. Um, my best friend. Uh, Martin Burns, uh, a great agilist, you know, involved in all the, uh, the conferences, did lots of work. But because he did work with SAFE, was, uh, um, I think the word castigated, a little bit outcast. Um, and the whole movement within the, you know, we're all following this, um, this Agile Manifesto, and we're all following these principles, and we're all looking at everything coming out of it. Uh, but some of the kind of the, the vitriol and the personal attacks and things and uh, and uh, egos at play and land grabs for history and that have just been appalling. Um, so when I went to um, Lean Agile Global and when I heard, um, uh, you know, when I heard um, people joining, yeah, when I heard... Uh, Dan Vacante's talk around about the secret history of Kanban, um, it really stirred something up in me. Um, I didn't know the original people in the, uh, you know, the Kanban movement because it all happened, you know, it all happened, you know, in, in a small place and a small ideas. But the kind of way that was kind of commercialized and grabbed and, and kind of claimed for certain people, when a lot of the contributors and a lot of the people, you know, just weren't involved, uh, was just amazing. I mean, I didn't know the I didn't know the people. The only person I've, I've met is uh, you know Dominica you know De Grandis, who was at the original things. Um, but I was very I was very stirred up, uh, and I was you know I was very emotional, um, and uh, you know I wish Dan very well and what he's trying to do, you know just to get things you know put on the record properly. And then I went to bed, and then I slept on it, and then I woke up the next morning, and I'd remembered that Craig had talked about when he had done something with the, the BCS 10 years ago for the 10th anniversary. Um, and I started thinking about the 20th anniversary, and, and we should do something. And, and it got like a bee in my head, and I wasn't sure why it was there. Um, and, and that day, Jim Benson had called me and uh, to ask me about reviewing his book. And I talked about this, and, and the more we talked about uh, you know, this Jim had a couple of you know expressions. One was he wanted to kind of perhaps go and do something new because part of the you know part of the agility movement and that you know was just not meeting you know what what excited him before. He liked the uh, the reflection idea because um, it's it's like one of the things that we always do is is examine ourselves and get in a room and open a circle of trust and and uh, hold up a mirror and. Uh, and he actually said, if he does propose something new, he is going to propose it until us have an annual review, uh, you know, of the community. Um, I, I, I contacted um, Alistair about it. I'm quite, um, yeah, quite close to Alistair. Um, and Alistair had some few messages for me. So he took me through the whole history of the first Agile conferences and setting up the first Agile conferences and, um, and just some of the, you know, it's, it's just some of the conflict in that. And, and he told me that the biggest thing about this that was exciting was the fact it was a grassroots thing. It was community led. It wouldn't be owned by any particular people or any per any persons. Um, and then I, I really just went out to my address book and, uh, and invited people along. And, uh, and I really, really 
you know, overcome by the amount of people that, you know, that, that have responded to this call. Uh, we had a meeting on, um, yeah, we had a meeting on the 3rd of September. And at the meeting on the 3rd of September, we, we talked about the, the, the vision. Um, and I'll probably, yeah, I'll, I'll pull it up in a second and I'll read it. Uh, but that vision was bought into by everyone. It was bought into by the Eastern meeting that we had in the Asia Australian time, and it was bought in by the Western meeting that we had in the Africa European uh, time. Um, what what it did do was, um, you know, it built on the all the communication that we'd had in the Slack group. Now I hate Slack personally, um, and uh, and and the the other thing is we all know Metcalf's law. And the amount of people in Slack and the amount of DM communications I've been having in Slack has, has got to the stage where I'm doing something like four, four hours of kind of correspondence with people. Um, and a lot of that is about reassurance and a lot of that is just about, um, you know, about concern and things. So I, I, was, I was actually reaching a crisis point. Um, and then yesterday I, uh, I did, um, yeah, one of the liberating structures that I particularly like is called Troika Consulting, where you get to people to listen to you and then you turn your back and then they listen to you and then uh, and then they, they talk about your problem um, and the two people I picked were Dove and uh, a business psychologist friend of mine who's creating a, an app to give free mental health to the entire world because you know really a little thing uh, Ian McLaren Wallace um, and when I started talking to uh, to Dove and Ian McLaren Wallace uh, what what I started talking about, and this is what I really want to talk to everyone about today, um, was so, um, were the feelings in, in the bad place that I went to last year. The so last year I, had, I was just ready to leave this community. I was so unhappy with everything. And partly because of that, um, when Martin died, uh, you know, we had to, there's a lot of things went on. Mark, you know, Martin almost had a constant feud with Dave Snowden, you know, on Twitter uh, that, you know, that everyone was following. Um, you know, I'd been in meetings where people were kind of, you know, saying, saying horrible things about Martin. Um, and I'd, I'd split with Martin. And I was actually, part of the reason I set up the Heart of Agile Scotland was to try and get away from the Scaled Agile group, uh, just because I was getting so much pressure and, uh, um, and stress just because you know Martin and I had set up the scale you know the scaled agile group it wasn't even a safe group you know we looked at all the scaling models but Martin and I work in large organizations and large organizations want to talk about how we scale um just kind of like a fact of life uh, you know not west bank has got you know 40,000 employees you know you can't just use scrum um right so um Martin and I fought the Martin and I fought towards the end and we um and when he died we weren't talking and uh that 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 left a huge wound for me so one of the things i want to do here is think a, a lot of the a lot of the things that we argue about right they're not real arguments we all agree in the manifesto we all agree there's better ways of working we all agree uh you know that we can come together and and we should be about energizing the next generation of agilists and break so the movement keeps going and going forward. You know, not about, you know, looking at the feuds of 20 years ago. Um, so I think the opportunity now, you know, 20 years is, is you know, is, is generational. 20 years is also the time to look to the future. But there's so much things in the past I think we could learn from if we actually you know, held up a mirror. But then I'm remembering what Alistair also said, and this, you know, this should also be light, and it should also be, uh, you know, we should also have fun. So it's not just a case of let's do something and let's look back with anger, right? And it's not just a case of, you know, um, let's just do a straight little simple reflection. Um, so, so what I came up with uh, was looking at um, models like the Edinburgh Festival, where you can have a wide variety of th people doing a wide variety of things. Um, and doing them all in, uh, you know, in a kind of a, a spoken hub setting. So, so the hub sets up and allows people to have a program and allows people to have a set of values and allows people to have a, uh, a code of conduct and provide central things like websites and, uh, and access to, uh, to, you know, yeah, to, to marketing and things. 
and supports and supports people putting things together. And then people can come towards together with ideas. And we could also do something there about linking into the, the broader, smaller communities. So this could be a, a, a local thing as well that, we, that feeds in. Um, some of the things I'd really like to see as part of that festival, um, you know, is, is a really big open space where we, I'm a, I believe in emergence. So I, I like ideas that emerge. So a really big open space that everyone in the world can get involved in and everyone in the world can build on and we can see what comes out. And, and the beauty and the reason I love that is I've got no idea what that will bring. Um, and that's why it might scare people, okay? Um, the other thing that, that I'd really like to see is some structured, formal, convivial debates. And I use the word convivial because there's too much arguing and shouting on Twitter, right? Um, already within the group, I've kind of had to have, you know, discussions around about, you know, uh, behavior, okay? And, um, and, and some of that, is, it's just sometimes we get into our kind of subgroups and, and, you know, and we do things. So let's have a discussion about behavior, okay? Um, because I think a lot of the things that men are doing are turning off women and turning women out of the, out of the industry. And we should, be, we should be looking at that. Um, also, we need to look at, you know, inclusion, um, sharing the, you know, sharing the knowledge, celebrating the, you know, the, the kind of the edge and not just, uh, you not just going back to the old stories. Um, and it needs to be about experimentation and, and taking things forward. Um, I also think we need a party and we need to celebrate and we need to look back at the good things and, and celebrate. And I think we need to do some oral history capture. So I'm, I'm talking about Martin again, right? Martin's website is absolutely amazing and his blogs are absolutely amazing and there's so much knowledge and learning in there. And I would like that to go somewhere to university so that someone in 50 years time can look back and they can see his work. In the old days, we had papers, right? So someone could go out of the house with a lorry, get the papers and, and sort it out. But now we don't. Um, you know, um, Mike, I was talking to Mike Beadle, you know, when Mike was murdered, okay? Um, where's Mike Beadle's work, you know? How many other people have we lost in the last 20 years? So one of the things I really want to do with this as well is get an academic university or something, um, and, and someone to look at this and get some, you know, um, and, and again, we've got lots of questions in there. It needs a bit of work. You know, we started off in technology department. Now we're probably in the business department. Uh, so I think a university itself would be interested to know, you know, where we're at. And, and then do a lot of capture. We could use Node Excel and things to capture all of these social interchange. You know, who was influenced by which, you know, by which conference. And then we could also do oral capture. So we can capture all the stories across it, everywhere of, uh, of, of everyone's everyone's side. The thing I really want to do is instead of having a meeting where maybe a few people come together and talk, um, um, or we all sit and watch a few people, you know, a few people on the stage, uh, like James Grenning or Alistair or that, and, and we hark back to Stilberg. Um, I'd like 10 minute TED talk type talks from everyone that's been involved in the last 20 years. I don't care whether it's business agility and I don't care whether it's safe and I don't care whether it's scrum and I don't care whether it's XP and I don't care what they are and I don't care whether you were there at Snowbird I don't care if you were there before Snowbird okay you get 10 minutes you tell your story you do your passion and we put that into one big YouTube channel the other thing that I'd love to do with the academic side is to capture practitioner papers so everyone's stuck at home nobody's getting out so everyone's at home for winter so imagine if, we, if all of us captured things that we liked about it and structured it into a practitioner paper, and we could even get academics to do academic papers, and we and we had that published and available. Um, when I was talking to Luke, uh, Agile is a bit like an underground river. So a lot of this is in twit, tweets, and a lot of this is in private conversation, and a lot of this is, uh, you know, has been at conference uh, corridors. I get most of my learning at conference corridors. Yeah. So. When we go, that goes. There's no resource. So let's capture it. Um, and, and let's try and stop the conflict. Um, when I saw the stress that Martin was put under, I really think some of this is in looking at what happened and looking at our behaviors. You know, we, we might want to be kinder in the future. Um, so that's, that's the idea. It's, uh, it's just a small idea. It, it's, um, but what I, what I really want to do to focus on now is, is focusing on um, building the hub. Um, 
So, you know, with the, well, I'm trying not to read the text. <laughs> uh, so with the hub, I think, because it's going to be a large organization that is going to be global, we are going to have to have some rules. I don't, and um, and we are going to have to have a smaller team running it. And the smaller team running it is is partly going to be there to help me because uh, I can't take all the feed for all the information for everyone involved now. And uh, I can only see this thing getting bigger, um, which means I am I am the rate limiting step. So I need to step back from that. Um, the Slack group as well has so much active stuff and so much uh, generation of material. Already people are looking at stepping back because they can't, they can't read everything that's coming up on Slack. Um, and some of the engagements be a turn off as well, let's be honest. Um, so I'm proposing we have a friends of group, which is kind of like the Slack group, probably got some more people in it as well as other people want to get involved. And it becomes a, a little bit of a review body and uh, big decisions go there. And one of the biggest decisions will be what kind of organization are we going to be? Are we going to be a charity? Um, I'd like to propose that, that we are a charity and any money that we do raise, and I think we do have a, kind of a, a, a potential to raise money, uh, it does get dis, you know, distributed to charity. I don't want to see anyone making money out of this because um, this isn't a money-making venture. It's a celebration of our industry. Um, and again, we're going to have to have ethics and, uh, and, and values because it's going to be very difficult in, in a lot of the things we're doing, right? To differentiate between where someone's celebrating something that was good and someone's just celebrating something they came up with. Um, and, uh, you know, kind of pushing their, pushing their material. So, so I'm going to need people uh, to help with that. And, uh, and, and that people are going to have to work as a team. And uh, those, that team is going to be kind of servant leading for the friends of group. I had called it designers and I've changed it to friends of because I want to see more friendly behavior. Um, yeah, we've all got the potential to teach. Um, I, yeah, I did a little video with Dave Snowden about debating and one of the things he said was he goes walking with three doctors. And I said, well, that's quite good. If you have any health problems, they can help you. And Dave said, no, I've got three doctors. They'll be arguing, I'll, I'll die while they're still discussing what they should be doing to me. And I think sometimes we're suffering from a lot of coaches. Um, and, and I also see this thing where we all agree, we're violently agreeing. So, you know, this should be grassroots. Yes, but it should be very grassroots. Yes, it should be grassroots. <laughs> and, and there's a lot of words, but actually, you know, perhaps collecting some of that into some documents and just putting it around for like general agreement would, would, would help. Um, yeah, so um, I kind of came to the conclusion that we couldn't go on as we were going on because I was getting overwhelmed uh, just by the communication and, and the amount of stuff. And I do think this model where there is a, a kind of friends of group with a less of a time commitment and there's a kind of core group um, and nobody makes any money and it's all voluntary. And we run this experiment and we, and the, on timetable, I'm hoping by the 1st of November, we could have the group set up in such a way that it was established, the membership was understood, the voting and the membership were there. Um, and we could also engage um, to the point where we could actually start taking events. So I'm thinking of this to be like a Coachella or something like that, where we're the, you know, we're the event and people and, you know, and people book gigs on it around the world. It's all going to be remote because we're still going to be locked down by February. Um, and, uh, you know, and we try and support creativity by allowing people to do, you know, as much as they want. Um, and, and we actually, you know, and we try and support inclusion. And, and that means inclusion as well of people that don't agree with us. But, but we also need to find ways to uh, convivial debate. Thank you, Daniel, for convivial debate. That was a, that was a great term. Um, so that's it. That's my story. That's what I want to do. I want to try and bring world peace to Agile. And I want to do it through having a fun time party. I want to get everyone involved and I want to get organized in such a way that it's uh, that it's safe, it's inclusive, um, and that we all have a good time. Yeah, that's my vision. <laughs>